Ladies and gentlemen, imagine standing on the last patch of land you can call home, only to watch it disappear beneath your feet. This is not a distant nightmare. It is the impending reality for my people in Tuvalu. At the relentless pace of sea level rise, Tuvalu is predicted to be engulfed by the ocean within decades. But it's not just the land we stand to lose, it's our identity, our nationhood. This time last year, I announced that Tuvalu will become the world's first digital nation, ensuring its continuing sovereignty in the face of a worst case scenario. International law is grappling with the nuances of statehood as rising sea levels threaten to engulf nations like Tuvalu. The conventional requirement for a defined territory is being challenged, necessitating a revaluation of what really constitutes a sovereign nation. As Tuvalu's physical land succumbs to the ocean, there is an emerging conversation around the concept of a virtual territory to preserve its sovereignty. Since last year, we have continued to digitally map our land and have now completed a detailed three-dimensional LIDAR scan of the entire country, all 124 islands and islets that make up Tuvalu. With this, we have built the foundation of our digital nation, redefining our legal territory, preserving Tuvalu for future generations, and creating a model to track and forecast rising sea levels. Defining new territory is an important step, but ultimately, the continued recognition of Tuvalu's statehood hinges on the willingness of other states to acknowledge its sovereignty. In September this year, Tuvalu enshrined a new definition of statehood in its constitution, the first of its kind in the world. Twelve nations have already signed joint communiques with Tuvalu to legally recognize this definition of statehood. Every country that signs helps protect our sovereignty and along with it, our place on the world stage. Joining Tuvalu, the 18 leaders of the Pacific Island Forum recently pronounced that their statehood and sovereignty will continue, notwithstanding the impacts of climate change-related sea level rise. Eventually, Tuvalu's digital nation will need to serve all the practical functions of a country. So we have begun exploring a system of digital identity that can eventually connect the Tuvalun diaspora. A digital passport stored on the blockchain will allow our people to conduct government affairs online from elections and referendums to births, deaths and marriages. To facilitate Tuvalu's digital migration, we've also begun upgrading our national communications infrastructure. A submarine cable laid in collaboration with development partners will provide the bandwidth we need to move our country into the cloud. Now we're taking these practical steps because we must but the tragedy of losing our island home cannot be overstated. If you were about to lose everything, what is the one thing you would save? We're asking that same question to the Tuvaluan people. Their answers, be it artifacts of sentimental value, the sound of language from our children, the wisdom in our grandfather's stories, or the vibrant dances at our festival, will all be digitized and will become part of our digital arc a vessel built for crisis, designed to carry the very soul of Tuvalu, preserving the essence of our nation for whatever future challenges we may encounter. Tuvalu is a small nation with a small carbon footprint. Our carbon reduction efforts alone cannot stop climate change. Unfortunately, not one country is on track to meet the targets set in the Paris Agreement. It will take immediate, decisive action from global superpowers to stop rising sea levels. The fate of our homeland is in your hands, but the fate of our country is in ours. We can't outrun the rising tides, but we will do what we can to protect our statehood, our spirit, and our Tuvaluan values. Values such as kaitasi, a sense of oneness and interconnectedness, sharing both your bounty and your burdens with those around you. Falepili, treating one's neighbor like family. Ava, respecting one's community, and alofa, showing genuine care and concern for others. I call upon the world's leaders. I ask you to embrace our principles, view our plight through the lens of our shared humanity. Act not only as neighbors, but as family. And together we can turn the tide, not just to rescue Tuvalu, but to save the world. Faftailasi, Tuvalu Monteatua.